Hello everyone, we have already walked through the reading and saving files. If you haven't watched them, then the link is provided in the description box. In today's video, I will explain 10 pandas functions with example. Some of them are so common that I'm sure you have used before and some might be new for you. But all of them are very important for your data analysis process. Now we will start with shape function. This function returns number of rows and column in tuple form. Let's see. First we will import pandas. This is my CSV file. Now run this. Now we will use shape function. For that we will simply write our data frame name df.shape. Now run this. So it returns a tuple in which this is our number of rows and this is the number of column. You can also verify number of rows by simply writing data frame. And as you can see that here it shows number of rows and number of columns. You can also get the number of rows by using index on shape. For that simply write shape function and provide index value. Run this. We will try another one and I have provided index value as 1. Run this and it returns 17. Now we will look at the size function. Size of a data frame gives the number of element in the data frame which is nothing but the number of rows times number of columns of a data frame. For example, simply write df.size and run this. So here you can see that it is nothing but the multiplication of rows and column. Now we will create an empty data frame to check what its shape and size will be. For that first create empty data frame. Here I have created my data frame as empty data frame. Now run this. Let's see the shape of empty data frame. Run this and it returns 0. Now we will look at the size of an empty data frame and it returns 0. Coming to endim function, this function returns an integer which represents the number of axes or you can say array dimension. If it is a series database, then it will return 1, otherwise it will return 2. Let's understand with an example. Here I have created a data frame with dictionary and now assigning the data frame and run this. Now we will use endim function and it returns 2 which means it is data frame. Similarly, we will create a series database. Run this. Now we will use our function to check and it return 1 which means this is a series database. This function is very useful when you are working with multiple databases and you have no clue about their data type. So instead of fetching entire data set, this function saves time. Now we will understand about data type function. Through this function, we will get the data type of column in data frame. So let's see with an example. Here I am going to create a data frame with dictionary and assigning that data frame in the ex1 variable. Now run this. So here it's created. Now to check all the columns data type, simply write ex1.dtypes. Run this and as you can see that it returns all the column name with their data types. You can also check data type of a single column. For that, you just need to provide the column name with data frame. For example, if I want to know data type of a salary column, for that I will provide my column name with data frame. Now run this and it returns the data type. Now suppose you are in a situation where you only need a subset of the column based on column data type. For example, you only need a column with integer data type or you can say float data type. You don't need all columns. So for that, you need select underscore data type. This function is used to get a subset of a data frames column based on the column data type. You can also include or exclude certain data type using include and exclude parameter. Now let's understand this with an example. We will use the previously created data frame. Here I have write the function select underscore D type and which include integer data type. Run this and it return all the column name who have integer data type. We will see another example. Now instead of integer, what if I want float data type? So for that, in place of integer, I will simply write float. Run this and it returns the column which is float data type. Now we will look at the example of exclude. If I want to exclude any particular column, for example, I want to exclude integer column then I will simply write and exclude integer data type so it written all the column but excluding 
integer. Here we have salary and age as integer column and it written name, gender and weight. Now we want a column with float values but we don't want integer value. For that we need to write select d type function with including float values and excluding integer value. Run this and it return the column with float values. With this function, three points you need to remember. First, if include and exclude values are empty, then it will return value error. If include and exclude have overlapping elements, then also it will return value error. And third, if any kind of a string data type is passed in it, then it will return value error. Now moving to next function which is values. This function is used to get the value of a data frame or you can say by using this function we will get the numpy representation as it removes the access level of the data frame. Now we will see the example of values function. Here I will write now run this and it represent numpy. Now coming to access function. This function returns a list with row and column access label. Here simply write data frame name dot access and run this. As you can see that it returns a list with rows and column access labels. Moving to the next function, empty function. This function shows whether data frame is empty or not. If it returns true, then data frame is empty. And if it returns false, then data frame is not empty. Simply write data frame name dot empty. Run this and it return false because our data frame is not empty. Previously, we have created one empty data frame. So let's check whether it return true or false. Run this and it return true as this data frame is empty. Now coming to the transpose function. This function converts row into column and column into rows. For that, simply write our data frame dot t. Run this. And as you can see that it convert rows into column and columns into rows. So that's all for this lecture. You can find these functions and code in our blog as well. The link will be provided in the description box. Thank you for joining us.